Hello people, and welcome back to another episode of City Skylines Modular Builds. I hope you're having a wonderful day. And in today's modular build, we are going to be working on a forest industry, uh, which has been requested by a few people, uh, funnily enough, since we worked on our modern farmland over here. Uh, you guys wanted to see kind of a forestry version, so that's what we're going to do today. Uh, so let's just go ahead and dive straight into it. Uh, so you're going to want to connect this right near a highway, pretty much, uh, similar like we did with our farmland here. You can see it just comes into this little kind of underpass intersection. It's very, very basic. So hook it into or near a highway, because uh, obviously, you know, the industry stuff needs a bit of a rebalance at the moment, but, you know, that's a, a topic for a different day. So we're going to have all our snapping on, and we're going to use our medium industry road. Obviously, industries is pretty essential for this build. Uh, and then we're going to come out by a distance of 1250, which is all the way up to here. What's that? That's 25 tiles, I think. So that's going to be a nice little introductory road into our forest industry. Then we're going to come and grab our small industry road. And we're going to come out by a really small distance of 1800. And then bring him parallel up alongside our main road like this. And at this point, this is where we're going to insert our main forestry building right along the edge here. And then this will generate our industrial area, which we obviously need to kind of paint out uh, to the size that you need it. Obviously, if you're kind of adjusting this modular build to uh, your own area, then, you know, paint the area out kind of as much as you need it. Then right next door to our main building, we're going to insert the forestry worker barracks. This guy's going to go right up alongside just like this. So you're going to have a kind of a nice couple of introductory non-polluted buildings as you enter the forest industry. Then we're going to come back to our medium industry road. And then from here, we're going to come out by 300. And then out by another 700. So it's a total of 1,000 in cost. And then exactly the same on this side as well. So the measurement is 20 tiles. So you'll come to a nice T-junction like this. And don't worry about the traffic lights. We will uh, turn them all off uh, towards the end of the build as well. And then at the halfway point here, so we can see we have these three blue nodes on this road right here. This middle one is the 500 marker. So it's halfway down the road. We're going to grab an industrial road, just the regular small industrial one. And then we're going to draw it down by a distance of 750, which also happens to be parallel with the entrance. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to switch to our one-way industrial. And we're going to feed him in to this side right here. Okay. Super duper. So we're working kind of this in here. I guess you can kind of tell I've been messing with the idea uh, beforehand because we have some pollution here. <laughs> uh, so we're now going to go ahead and draw in the, uh, still using the one ways here. So I'm going to come out by a distance of 300 and then just draw out a little bit. Uh, it doesn't really matter how much. We'll box it in a moment. Uh, then we're going to come ahead and grab our pulp mill. If you want to use um, the biomass pellet plant, you need to bear in mind both of these buildings are pollutive. They do give ground pollution, so they will kill trees and lower land value. So try and keep them away from residentials and kind of forests if you can. Uh, because we're going to kind of have our forest processing over here. So we want to keep the pollutive stuff away. Uh, the pulp mill looks really great. And um, if you face this up alongside your highway, it's kind of a really nice, important building that all your cars will pass by. And uh, it just kind of makes your forest industry look a little more interesting if you're kind of looking at it from the highway. You kind of have all the, as all these cars drive past it, you're going to be getting, uh, you know. So it's just a nice view if you have this right up alongside the main road. But if you want to use the biomass pellet plant, and you can also use both. I will use both in this build, but um, it's up to you which one you want to use. So now we're going to box this biomass pellet plant in and you'll notice that it just kind of comes in perfectly so the distance here is 300 540 300 again and then 540 again so it's a perfect rectangle uh, however you're going to want to change the one-way flow system just like that so wood or well raw forestry product I guess is the the term right yeah raw forest product will arrive from this section it'll come down They'll feed into the biomass pellet plant, which will produce those paper. And then they can either leave the forest industry out this one-way road and back onto the highway. Or they can head back into the forest industry 
and uh, go and pick up more supplies, you know, whatever they're going to do. Okay, super duper. So we're now going to switch to our two lane road with trees, and this might seem a little weird, but these roads actually work really nicely with the forest industry builds. So from the bird's eye view, we have something that looks a little bit like this right now. Okay, then from this end point here, we're going to draw out by a distance of 1440 which is all the way here, so what's that? That's 24 tiles, right? Yep, yeah, 24 tiles. 1440, nice and simple. So now we have this road in here. We're going to grab our medium industrial road again, and we're going to bring him all the way up to this road guideline right here. So you can see it's a distance of 2,000, and everyone is just kind of mirroring each other here. And this is where we're going to place our our kind of big forestry production stuff, right? Okay, so final measurements for this one it's 2,000 across each side and then your small two lane roads are 1440 on each side as well very nice so in terms of forestry production uh, I'm going to use, well the measurements for this particular one are focusing on the medium tree plantation and you're going to want to place these facing the two lane road right here. Okay, so we're going to put one in each corner of this rectangle. Now, kind of touching on that point again, industries needs a major rebalance at the minute. If you're going to kind of spam a lot of the small or a lot of the large, and you're going to be producing uh, lots and lots of industrial traffic, which will quickly um, clog up your road networks wherever you're kind of placing this in the city. Uh, but this one, it still makes a profit. You'll still hit level five, and the traffic to, from it um, isn't too bad. So um, you know, it's up to you, kind of which size fields you want to use. But obviously, the measurements of that will have to change to accommodate them. Uh, and then one final road straight through the middle here. Boom. If you want to for the middle road, you can switch to the the road with grass. Uh, but these kind of pedestrian roads, they work really nicely with the forest industry stuff, and it takes. Um, kind of takes a little bit of different texture and colour away from these spammed industrial roads. So again, it's up to you which one you want to use. My preference is to go for them. You can stick to the small industry roads if you want. Really up to you. So then from this point right here, this road, uh, this is the main road that we drew in. Uh, we're going to draw a bridge. So we're going to come right out, come back a little bit. We're going to come up by three steps on the lowest elevation point. And then we're going to come right up to this middle road. So we're going to have a nice smooth slope. We're going to click across. We're going to come across by 520. So right now we can see that the pillars are parallel with the road. Everyone's nice and symmetrical. And then we're going to draw this down by 1220. So you can see the two distances, 1220 each side. The bridge is perfectly symmetrical. It's got a nice slope on uh, either side of it. And then, yeah, that's kind of kind of it. <laughs> uh, so we'll come back and grab our industrial roads again. I'm going to go small industry. Uh, and then I'm just going to separate these guys away. So I'm going to come out by 1200. And, uh, there's uh, another couple of road guidelines in here. There we go. And then just kind of separate the little road here. Uh, and then what this is perfect for, uh, you can kind of use this for a variety of reasons. Um, your sawmill will work really nicely along here too. Uh, you can maybe throw in the engineered wood plant, a bunch of your storage buildings. Uh, let's get that engineered wood plant in actually. So these ones kind of at the beginning here, the engineered wood plant and the sawmill are non-polluted buildings, however the biomass plant is. So um, don't place your biomass plant here. Uh, you can maybe get, um, well you could get a large log yard in, I can't particularly on this map because of the water. Um, but really, pop a couple of storage yards in here, uh, your processing buildings to get some planned timber. And uh, you know, you'll kind of have a nice little processing road along here. And we can do some detailing with this little gap in the middle as well, uh, in a moment too. Um, so right here, if you wanted to do kind of both the biomass pellet plant and the pulp mill, then this right here is a good place to go ahead and get your uh, biomass pellet plant in. Bear in mind, they are both producing the same thing. So if you have really high demand for paper, then throw both of them in. And if you have the budget, it can look pretty nice as well to have these kind of two uh, big industrial looking buildings right next to one another. So again, it's really up to you if you want to include this biomass pellet plant. 
Uh, with this space here, um, if you're playing with green cities, um, this is a really nice opportunity to use the geothermal power plant. Um, this will obviously provide power for your city, kind of as you link it into different areas. Uh, however, it's just a really nice looking building and um, it kind of works really nicely with the forest industry stuff because it's just so organic. Uh, it's a non-polluted building, you know, it gives no ground pollution at all. Uh, so it's not going to be damaging your trees. And I think it fits in quite nicely with the overall theme of the kind of the modern forest industry, right? At least I think so anyway. So great opportunity to use a power plant here as well. If you don't want that power plant here, then either just decorate it with trees. Um, and also like we did with our uh, farm industry over here. And, um, you know, we kind of included a little bit of the, the, uh, the zoning before uh, industries DLC. So you can see here, I'll just delete this and draw it in again. So say for example, if you didn't want the power plant here, you could draw in a separate district. So this is just a regular district that comes with the base game. Come across to your industrial specializations, set this to forestry, and then zone it out with industrial. And then what you're gonna do, similar to like how we did with our modern farm, you're gonna start generating some kind of old school forest industry in here. Uh, obviously it will still be related. It'll still work with your industrial area. Um, but you know it's going to be uh, themed with forestry and it'll throw in a few new assets as well okay so obviously as we begin to play the game now we'll notice that these guys have not enough natural resources which is not particularly good because they need natural resources to function so with forestry they obviously need forests and trees to, to function you know that's their that's the natural resource and um, forestry is the only industry area that you can actually place the resource in but i guess it doesn't really make sense because there's trees growing here already so they do have it but either way uh, you do need to place trees around your uh, forestry producing buildings so we'll kind of see as we line these gaps that we left so you can kind of see you know we've got these little spaces right here uh, all around the edge of the the forestry buildings uh, we can actually place in trees kind of all around them. Doesn't matter which type of tree you use, you can use any of them for it. I'm just gonna keep placing them in all the way around. And you'll notice that as we place them in, the uh, natural resources error or warning uh, will go away because they can now take their forestry product from these trees right here that are lit up with all the green, right? So that's gonna fix that issue for you and then they're gonna start producing raw forestry product. And then they'll start distributing it to the engineered wood plant, the sawmill, and uh, the, the biomass pellets and the pulp mills over here as well. Um, if you want to run some paths through here, um, the zoo paths look pretty good, as always. <laughs> Do like a zoo path on the channel. Um, you could maybe bring some around your power plant here if you wanted to. Um, kind of this space here is perfectly symmetrical for zonings on either side uh, obviously you no, know, it's only going to be 4x4 four four, so maybe take one off the side like that uh, you could run one through the middle here so kind of if you have part life if you don't have part life then maybe just use some of the regular pavement paths uh, you know it's kind of up to you kind of how much detail you want to go into this thing um, for example I also have my um, green build my uh, green canal residential build that we had uh, a while ago and uh, my paths kind of come to an end here so this would be a good opportunity to link uh, my residential and industrial together with some pathways so workers can kind of cross these bridges to get to and from work that's going to be super useful for them uh, and of course obviously you know this city is non-functioning but don't forget to actually uh, hook this build into uh, kind of the rest of your city um, instead of just the highway so I might just draw in a road like that obviously you know you might want to make it a little more impressive uh, but either way now we'll start to see uh, a bunch of cars come in and you'll kind of see how you know the cars the trucks here oh there's one thing we haven't done of course um, traffic lights so come into your infra views traffic views and junctions and turn off every single traffic light we want no traffic lights through here Make sure everyone is free. And then come out of it. So when this thing first starts functioning and all these store buildings start to fill up, you will get a little bit of traffic like this, but don't worry, it will go away. And then you can see that 
this bridge right here, what it's doing is it's siphoning all the traffic off of these side roads. So obviously these are producing our, our wood. And then these emerge onto these roads right here, like Ashley Street. However, for people that just want to get into these bones right here, uh, they have the bridge coming over the middle. Uh, so that's going to help them just get from one side to the other without causing too much traffic around these corners here and underneath here. Uh, the road underneath actually gets very little use, but I think it's a nice aesthetic touch. You could take it out and run a path through here if you want. Uh, it's kind of really kind of up to you. Uh, but the bridge kind of adds a nice layer of height, I think. Uh, I really like the bridge here. If you don't want it to look kind of as industrial, then just switch out to a regular bridge. Uh, don't use the industrial road for it. Just use the regular medium road. And uh, yeah, kind of some more detailing things you do. Obviously, you've got the fences you can run through here as well. Um, helps if you just snap to the angle when you're doing these fences. Uh, so the main building uh, has snap nodes on it. You can draw fences out from these points. Uh, that's certain ones anyway, like we did just right here. Uh, so you can kind of entirely fence off your industry if you wanted to. And uh, you could bring some out here and then up to the pathways. So it does kind of give that impression of, um, you know, it is like a, a, a gated industrial area. You can't just walk into here. Well, I suppose you can. But, uh, you know, it's very clearly segmented off. So feel free to throw in some stuff like that as well. Um, you can throw in some office zoning, maybe just a couple of squares here and there, nothing too major. Um, you know, that just kind of adds to the point of, you know, it's like administration for the industry area. So kind of throw in a couple of little different designs if you wanted to. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's kind of going to be the, the Modular Forest build, guys. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and detail it up, uh, wait for some of these zonings to come in. And uh, we'll kind of see what they look like once they're in here together. And then, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll be right back. All right, guys, so I finished off some very light detailing. I've just surrounded the entire forest industry complex with some fencing, which just kind of gives it a nice border. You know, it's obviously something very specific. Uh, you can see how applying some of the old school um, industrial stuff works really nicely here. Uh, you know, you're going to get some really nice different looking assets and along here that really help make your forest industry a little more unique and different. You know, I think a lot of time, uh, in, even including me, we forget about these old school stuff since industry arrived. Uh, but the assets from it, they look really nice and, um, you know, they just blend in perfectly well with kind of the rest of this particular build itself. Uh, the office buildings are coming in now as well, so, you know, treat that as like administration. Um, you might want to make them historical just so they don't get too tall. You know, it's kind of administration for the forestry. You would expect there to be a lot of paperwork with this, so uh, having a couple of office buildings in uh, would work nicely, in my opinion. Take a little look at the, indu uh, the industry tab stats here. Um, you know, we're making a really decent profit. Uh, you've got enough workers to hit level 5. Uh, you're producing enough resources to, obviously, hit level 5. This will just continue to tick over forever. Um, I think the max one is... Is it 500 or 550? Either way, if you don't have enough workers to hit it, depending on what you place in this thing, uh, then you've still got some more room along here to place in a couple of these buildings. And you can you know, just kind of adjust the production uh, of these things as you need it. But we're producing raw forest industry paper and plant timber. Uh, and then you can then distribute them to any of your factories if you want to kind of place any of these things nearby as well. Uh, then you've got the option to do that but obviously you know you might need your oil or or industry as well to complement those factories so just bear that in mind so yeah we'll move into the outdoor charge check how this thing looks at night time but uh, this is going to be it for the modular build forest industry uh, i hope you guys liked it if you did a like below is always appreciated equally as much if you didn't enjoy it please feel free to leave a dislike as well uh, but otherwise i want to thank you all so much for watching and as always enjoy the rest of your day <laughs>